Access Inspire is jam-packed with lots of fantastic features that can be used to make lessons interactive, engaging, and motivating. For today's webinar, how do I do that in Active Inspire again? I wanted to revisit some of the great features of the software to demonstrate how easy they are to use and also how they can support learning and teaching in the classroom. Now, in order to do this, I wanted to canvas your ideas of the things that you would really like to, to learn about. And to do this, I put out a doodle poll. So thank you for those of you who are watching this recording that um, participated in that doodle poll. And that helped me determine what the first three features are that we're going to be covering today, that I'm going to be covering today, and also what the next three features are that will be covered in the June webinar. So on screen now, you can see the three topics that we're going to cover today, groups and pulleys, magic ink, and text interaction. Now, for those of you that, it, that were able to attend the live session on Tuesday, um, I just want to let you know that this is actually a re-recording of that webinar. Um, we missed the first 10 minutes of it, and I wanted to make sure that you guys had all of it to be able to watch. Okay? So let's get started with the first feature then, groups and pulleys. So to start off with, I just want to revisit grouping. So this is a basic um, feature of the software, a, a basic thing to be able to do, but I think it's always good in revisiting some of these um, sometimes. So what I can do is if I take my little bear here, and I'm going to take the word bear, and then I'm going to use this little label, and maybe I, I want some information about the bear as well. So I'm just going to move these so that they're on um, a different layer to bring them to the front. Okay, so I can bring these up and put them on there. Now, to group all of these objects together, right now, they all move independently of each other. But what I want to do is I want to group them together so that if I move the bear, the text, everything else will go with it. So to do that, you just use your left click, and I hold my left button down and drag a box over top of all of the objects that I want to be grouped together, and then take my, left, my finger off the left button. And then I get my object edit handles up. So the one we're looking for is the one in the middle. And remember, we do Active Inspire does have those tool tips. So if you hover over top of that, you'll see that that icon there says grouped. So if I click on that, it then turns yellow. And what that means is that all of these objects are now grouped together. And as you can see, if I pick up the bear, they all move together. Or if I pick up the label, they all move together. Okay? So very simple to group objects. If I click on it again, I can see that that's yellow, they're grouped together. If I click on it now, I can ungroup those and they're all separate objects again, okay? So again, I take my squirrel and I wanna drag that box around it and group them by pressing that grouped button right there on my object edit handles. And I can do the same with the bear. I'm gonna group them together, okay? So how do we use that technique to create pulleys. And that is basically what we do. It's just grouping objects together. And then it's where I place that pulley is, is what gives us the pull tab. So you can see here I've got an arrow and I've just got some text. So um, we're, we're doing <clears throat> a writing lesson, a literacy lesson, and I want to remind my class at the end to make sure that they check their spelling, that they've gone back. So I want to have these little hints and tips. I don't want to have it always visible because I don't want it to be taking up space on the page. So what I can do is if I drag that box around the, the two objects and then group them together, I could then take that and just tuck it off the page. Okay, so I've got that little tab here showing me that, that there's um, something that I want to pull up to reveal. So that's a good visual cue for me. And I can pull it up and reveal that. Have them check that and tuck it back down again. Now, when I create my flip chart, um, I'm quite particular about how things are placed on the page. And I don't like that I could come up and pull this all over the place and, and cover up some of the valuable information that's on there. What I want to do is make sure that this just pulls up straight and tucks back down again. And the software allows me to do that. So what I'm going to do is just come over here and pin my browser in place. I'm going to select that object and I want to find the property browser. So this one here is the property browser. Again, once you hover over top of it, you get that little tool tip to tell you what it is. Now, I'm using the studio interface of the software, but everything I'm showing you tonight can be done in the primary interface in almost exactly the same way. The property browser in the primary interface is also found up here in your browser window, and the icon does look quite similar. But once again, if you're not sure, you do get that tool tip to help you. 
So in here, I'm just going to curl up some of these options, and I want to come down to the bottom to find the one called restrictors. So I'm just going to click on that. And the one I'm looking for, the option is can move. And right now it says can move freely, but I, what I want it to do is actually move vertically. Now just a little warning is I do find that sometimes the first time I um, change that, it doesn't always take, so I can go back. If it doesn't, if it doesn't take and move vertically, you can just go back and check, but you can see it has remembered that. So now when I pull that little tab up, you can see my mouse moving and it only moves vertically on my page. So a nice way to just tidy up those pull tabs a little bit if, if you want to. Okay, I'm just going to reset my page. Now, this is a um, fantastic um, resource pack that I found on Promethean Planet, and I'm going to cover um, where you can find these things at the end of the section. Um, but this was a, a, a resource pack created by Planet member Kelly Gilchrist, and she did these fantastic pull tabs. So instead of having to spend all the time creating these myself, all I need to worry about is the information that I put on them. So what I want to do with this, again, you can see, just hide that off the page and reveal it when I want. I could put that restrictor on it, again, if I wanted to. But what I can also do is I could make this object a container. So again, I'm going to select it and go into my property browser. And this time, I'm able to see the properties of this particular object. And the one I'm looking for here is container. The, the simplest thing to do is just change that right there to anything. So I want to make this tab be able to contain anything, okay? So now, if I take my bear and drag it onto the tab, you can see I can pick that tab up and move it around. I could take my squirrel. Let's get some of our text on there as well. Drag that on, pick that up and move it around. Then what I can do is I can just tuck that up to the top there and hide that out of sight. Now, because it's a container, I can pull that down and my class could actually take the information off the pull tab to complete the activity on the page. I can tuck that back up again so you see it moves. Okay, so again, I can just pull that off. And that's because this is a container set to contain anything. So anything I put on it will automatically be contained but it enables me to also take things off it again, okay? So a nice little aside there of something that, that you can do. So our pull tabs. Now, one last thing I want to show you is if I just group this one again, okay, so we've got that little pull tab. This might be something that I don't want to just use for one lesson. I might, I might want to use this for various lessons. So I don't have to create everything every single time I want to make it. I can save these kind of things, tools that I'm going to use over and over again, into my resource library to use. So I'm just going to go up to my resource library here in my browser. Now remember, in primary, you open your resource browser from your toolbar. And I'm just going to go to the My Resources, this one here. And I could put it in a folder, but just for time's sake, I'm just going to pop it into the My Resource folder. And all I need to do is open up the folder I want it to go into and drag it and drop it there. And you can see that that resource is now there. What I could then do is pull that out on any other flip charts that I make um, and use that same pull tab idea. Now, if I had the restrictor on that, it would have also remembered that property and it would have pulled it out with a restrictor as well. Okay, so let's see some ideas on how we can use this idea of pull tabs in a learning and teaching context. Now this is a page that I got from a resource pack on Promethean Planet called um, Layers and Groups. And again, I'll show you, um, talk about that at the end of this section. And this is using grouped objects. So that idea that I did with the, the little image of the bear and the um, piece of text, the, the, the label. Now, this is a very visual tool. Interactive whiteboard or interactive displays are very visual tools. So I want to make it interesting for my class. Obviously, I would change how it looks depending on the age of the learner. This page was designed for younger learners and is looking at creating sentences. And what I love about how this was made is the grass down at the bottom with the words hidden behind it and these little butterflies that sit on top of it. Okay, so it just makes it really visual and engaging to look at. Attached to each of these butterflies is the words for the sentence. 
Now, what I really like about this, again, has to do with layering, is that it might be, I can see there's a word there, but it might be difficult sometimes to pick that up and just drag the actual word hidden behind there, okay? So what we could do instead is just drag the butterflies up. And I've seen this used in various ways, like coins in a treasure chest, um, giving facts, historical facts about something. So the learners could come up, drag some words out of there, and then um, create a sentence with it, okay? So having these little tabs, remember it doesn't have to be a tab hiding off a page, it could be a tab hiding behind something on your page, but a great little idea that one is. This is another one that I found on Promethean Planet and it's by Planet member Michael Hughes. And if you're interested in um, using his flip chart, if you just do a search on Planet for collective nouns, it'll, it'll come up with Michael's flip chart. And what I like about this is the pull tab he used, not only does it have words, it also has images. So we're looking at collective nouns. So we can see here that we have one hedgehog in this picture and we've got a bristle of hedgehogs here. So talking about what the collective noun is and the image helps to consolidate that in some of my learners' minds as well. Okay, so we're using different learning styles. Now, instead of hiding it off the bottom, you can see that this one was hidden off the side of the page. Now, the way Active Inspire is set up, you get your, your flip chart page. So that's your surface. Normally, it would default as white. I put a background, or Michael's put a background on here that's green. And then you see the blue areas off to either side. And this is what we call the world around the flip chart. And there's actually a lot of benefit to having this world. And one of those things is being able to hide things off of it and drag it on to reveal it, like this pull tab here. Okay? But the way it was in Michael's flip chart when I downloaded it, it showed part of the picture. So all I needed to do was to select that, ungroup it, and then I just extended that arrow to make it a little bit longer so I could tuck it off so that you couldn't see it. So remember, if you do download um, other people's flip charts from Promethean Planet, you don't have to use it exactly as it is because you can customize that flip chart to best suit you and your class. This page here is one of our premium content offering on, P on Promethean Planet that, that you can purchase, and it's based on the um, Dorling Kindersley Eyewitness series. And these are fantastic flip charts that go along with the Eyewitness series of books that are used in a lot of classrooms around the world. So this one in particular was looking at predators, and they've created these tabs here to pull on to give more information. So as a teacher, it means that I can have all of the information that I, that I want to discuss in that lesson, but I'm in control of when that's revealed to my class because I can pull that on and reveal it to my class when I want them. So we're all moving through this at the same time instead of some of my class jumping ahead. Now what they did was they, they didn't want those tabs to be seen and instead of making a big long one, um, they, they instead put these um, shapes on either side, on the world on either side of the flip chart surface. So if I just go up to design mode up here for a minute and pick that up, you can see here's one of the shapes just put on the side there, locked into place, and that way I can pull it out from behind it without pulling it, and it hides the information on that tab, so I have control of when I want to reveal it to my class. Doesn't always need to use tabs just to give information, or just, just to give pieces of information one at a time. So this is an example of a literacy lesson where they were looking at literacy, literary terms and um, using Shakespearean plays um, to see if the class can remember all of these different types of literary terms that they've been talking about and studying. So instead of having to create a flip chart page for every passage that they wanted the class to vote on, could create the tabs down at the bottom to do that instead. If I pull this tab up, you can see here that we've got um, a, a quote from Romeo and Juliet, something that Juliet said, and then um, the class would use their active expression or they could use the class flow plugin and use tablet devices in the classroom to vote on which type of literary term they think this is an example of, okay? Class could then discuss it. 
Now, there's something else that I've added onto this little tab, and you can't see it because I'm actually using the feature that we're going to talk about next after this one, and that's the magic, um, magic ink. So I've got a little magic reveal tool, and don't worry, I'm, I am going to talk about this, and I'll show you this in the next section, is I could go over top of that tab, and I can actually reveal the correct answer. So after my class has, um, has individually voted on what they think the correct answer is, then we've talked about it, we've identified what it was, we can have a little creative way of revealing it here. Now this all has to do with layering of the software and having things on different layers um, and, and grouping them together. But as you can see, all of that is grouped together. I can tuck that right back off the page. So when we finish it, I can pull up the next one and we can continue on with another example. So tabs can be used for just building on a concept or checking, um, checking a learning intention in different ways without having to create a whole bunch of different pages to do it. So just to finish off this section, our pull tabs, I, I'm sure that you can find, think of some really great ways that you would be able to use that in, in your, in your um, classroom yourself. So what I've got down here is some great um, support where you can go to find out more about this after you've watched the webinar. So if we just go to Promethean Planet, you can see here I've got Active Tip 12, Pulleys, Groups and Pulleys. So if I go to Promethean Planet, this is our free online user community. In order to get the most out of it, you need to register for it, but it doesn't cost anything. And in actual fact, the bulk of the information on here is free of charge as well. So if we go to professional development, videos, manuals, and more, okay, here you can see that there's some active tips. Now this, these were created by um, Promethean employee Scott Caulfield, and they are great. They're little short clips that take a feature of the software um, and show you how to do it. And he also shows it in, in a learning and teaching context. So if you just do a search here for Active Tip 12, it will come up for the one that's relevant for, for this one on groups and pulleys. Okay? I also mentioned these little pull tabs. These are some of Kelly's pull tabs here um, by Kelly Gilchrist. So if you are interested in finding these, all you need to do again is on Promethean Planet, this time in the search field. We're just going to search for pull tabs. You can see I've got it there. Click search. And the first one, and in fact I think it's the only one that appears, is pull tabs by, Kenny, by Kelly. And you just need to download this and upload this into your own resource library. Okay. The third one I mentioned here was the Layers and Groups resource pack. This really is geared towards lower primary, I would say, but very useful, and it does have some great ideas that can be adapted for older children as well. So again, if you do a search for Layers and Groups, that will come up in the resource search on Promethean Planet. So let's move on to feature number two, Magic Ink. Now, I think this is a really exciting one, and this is one of our most popular features because I think it's so versatile and can be used in so many different ways. So let's start it with how does it work? Now, if you know the basics of the Active Inspire software, you'll know that objects um, on the page can be in different layers, okay? A Magic Ink tool only works on objects that are on the top layer of the software. And what it does, it allows you to look through the top layer to see objects that are in the middle, bottom, or background layer. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Now, I'm just going to use this little jumping alien that we got here, and I got this from, from um, my resource library under subjects, general, um, and uh, I think it was cartoons or characters, and then they had animations. Okay, so all of these um, are available for anybody to use free of charge. And what I'm going to do is just use my shape tool and select shape and I'm going to drag a box over top of him to cover him. Now as I said things come onto the software in, in different layers. The only objects that automatically default to the top layer are, are objects that I created using the pen or the um, highlighter tool. Most other objects will default to the middle layer so text, images, my little animated gif there um, my shapes automatically default to the middle layer. Now, as I said, 
And let's, let's have a look at that. So if I go into my browser, again, same in primary, you'll have your object browser here. I can see all the things that are on the top layer and the middle layer. In this case, I don't have anything in the bottom of the background. Now, as I said, Magic Ink only works on the top layer of the software. So right now, Magic Ink wouldn't have any effect on here. I wouldn't be able to use it on top of this to be able to see my little alien underneath. What I need to do is move this to the top layer of the software. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can do that. The first is in my browser window, I can just purely pick that up and drop that into the top layer. Okay, so you can see now it's under the top layer. Or the other way is in my object edit handles, I can go to reorder and move that to the top layer. And you can see it now sits in the top layer in my browser. I have my Magic Ink tool because I use it quite often on my toolbar. But if you don't have it on your toolbar, you just want to go into the hammer and spanner. And again, in primary, the primary interface, hammer and spanner as well, and Magic Ink appears there. With the primary interface, all your tools will come down at the bottom, but Magic Ink will be in those tools as well. So if I select that, I can then rub over top of here. You can see my little alien starting to come through there. Okay. Now, what it does is it doesn't actually rub anything out. It puts an object on top that is transparent to top layer objects and translucent to all other layers. So what that means is I can actually pick that up and I can move that around, okay? I can pull that down and reveal that. So if you remember from the example in, in the, for the previous feature on the Shakespearean plays, so looking at literary terms, that's what that little magnifying glass was made from. It was an object grouped where in the center they used this little magic ink shape that they made to group that to make it look like a magnifying glass. Now don't worry, I'm going to come to that and, and speak to you about how you can get hold of those, um, those types of tools yourself, okay? Just before I move on though, let's look at another way that we could use that magic ink. So this time what I've got is we're looking at plural and singular, or singular and plural there, that wasn't intentional. Um, and what I've got here is just on top of each other. So I could put those two words right on top of each other and then we could discuss it. My class could come up, somebody from my class could come up and they could annotate it and say, I think that the plural would be ES. Then we could check that with our magic ink just by rubbing that out and reveal that's correct. So the correct spelling for plural would be an ES. Okay, again, remember that's just an object it puts over top of it, so I can pick that up and reveal what they gave and what the answer was, so we can see that they got that correct. So let's have a look at this feature in a learning and teaching context. This is another great one um, that, that I found. It's actually a, a Promethean created one. And so the class were studying fables and looking at morals of the story. So down the side here, um, what the class could do in discussion is come up and write down what they think the fable was. So um, I'm just going to do, I'm not going to write it all out because it's very difficult to try and write with my mouse on my computer. But we could do tortoise and the hare. So let's just do tort and hair. Okay, so the class could come up, annotate on here what they think the fable was to go with the moral of the story. And then we can again use that magic ink to check and make sure that we got it right. Okay, so well done, we got that one right. So the way this page has been created, again, if I go into design mode, is I have an object here that's placed over top of that. Now, as you can see, what, what they've done is use the camera tool to take a snapshot of the background so that it doesn't interrupt that picture. It looks like it just fits in there, but that, this is actually sitting on the top layer, whereas the correct text is sitting on the middle layer. So when the magic ink is used, it sees through that top layer to the text on the middle layer, revealing the correct answer. Okay. Not too difficult to do once you know how to, to do these things yourself. This example was created by a colleague of mine, Samantha Clues. Now, Sam um, would normally be on the webinars with me, uh, but is currently off on maternity leave. 
So I love this example that she put together. So it's looking at um, features of the landscape and and how they fit in. So why they why they developed in the ways that they have, and looking at the past to find out some of these answers. So in this case, we use our magic ink, and if I rub over top of here. I can rub it out to reveal to see, ah, that's why, because these were some of the trenches in World War I, and this is how the landscape has covered back over it afterwards. Okay, so again, I can move that out of the way. So let's just reset the page and go into design mode. So we've got the background image, and what Sam has done is use the camera tool to take a snapshot of an area of that background image, fitted it right back on there so you don't even notice that that's there, and then put the picture behind of the men in the soldiers in the trenches. So this object here is on the top layer, and the picture of the men in the trenches is in the middle layer. And again, we can use our magic ink there to rub that out and see through into it behind. Okay. So very clever and very effective. As I said, I can also use the objects made with that magic ink to create little reveal tools like this. Now, I love this one that's of a pH scale. And so we could be looking at different um, things and figure out, out where they fit on the pH scale. Now, this has also been set to restrict, so it moves very nicely along my little pH scale here, and we can reveal the different parts of it and discuss that. I could have done this just by rubbing it out, okay, which is fine, but just makes it that little bit more magical having this tool that I can pull instead. This is another one that I found on, on Promethean Planet. It was actually created by Kathy Booth, who is um, one of the a Promethean employee in the States. She's got some great resources that she shared on Promethean Planet. So this one, um, She's taken a little tool that was created here. I'm talking about um, this lesson was on lab safety, looking at symbols, um, lab safety symbols. And so to make it a little bit more engaging, I um, created this little x-ray machine that we can go down and view what the symbols look like by using our little x-ray machine. Okay? So it's just keeping that in common with what she's already doing. And I think it just adds to it and makes it a little bit more exciting. This is another one that I found on Promethean Planet that I love. And um, what has been done here is we've got this black box that's on the top layer, and it's sitting over top of background that has lots of different pictures of famous women. Okay? I love this, a Polaroid snapshot to have a look at these pictures. So this is also on the top layer. It's just on the top layer above that black background. And we could then pick that up find one of the women and stop and discuss it. Okay, so I love this, that idea of the Polaroid picture just giving us a view into the past. Now once again, all of most of the examples that I've used here, you, you can find yourself on Promethean Planet, but we also have a lot of support around Magic Ink and how to use it. So again, um, there are actually three active tips that cover um, magic ink. Now, not only, remember to find the, ma the active tips is professional development, videos, manuals, and more, but not only can I look at the little videos of the active tips, what Scott, Scott has also done is if I do a search for active tips, he's also shared the flip charts in the videos. So what that means is that you can watch the video, download the associated flip chart onto your own computer, and work, your, work yourself through it as well, okay? So all of that available to you as well, just by clicking on um, doing a search for active tip. The little reveal tools, like the magnifying glass and the Polaroid picture and Kelly's little, uh, or sorry, um, Kathy's little x-ray, um, revealer as well. You can create the, those yourself, but what I suggest is have a look on Promethean Planet because there's other um, Active Inspire users out there who have done that and shared that themselves. So really great for time saving, um, like Cal Hathaway. 
So he has a resource pack on here. If we just do a search for Magic Reveal or Magic Revealers and do a search, you can see here that we come up with some Promethean Planet um, submitted ideas on how to do this. So this one is a flip chart, and I love this because Cal actually talks you through how to create one of these objects yourself if you want to, but he also gives you lots of objects that you can then pull into a folder in your resource library, just like I did with that first pull tab in the first example, and save that to use yourself. He's also created resource pack, a resource pack that has that too. Okay, so have a look in there. There's some great things. Now, the other one that we've got is a Promethean created one on magic erasers. So again, if you do a search for magic erasers, you'll be able to find lots of these fantastic tools and save you having to make them all yourself. So we now move on to our final feature for today's webinar, and this one is interacting with text. I'm just going to jump right into some examples with this one because I thought that, would, that was the easiest um, way of showing it. Now, this page, we've got a title there, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Okay, so my class have a bit of an idea what we're going to be looking at today, and I've got some um, little tabs that are just hidden off the page there. What you don't see is I actually have, well, I didn't, somebody, this, this is another one I took from Promethean Planet, have hidden objects on here. So I've got lots of text dotted around the page, and the reason why you don't see it is because the text is white. Okay, so if I find one of those boxes, double click on it, we can see here that the text is white. That's why you don't see it. So they hide very nicely on the background. What that enables me to do with these tabs is to drag the tab around and we can find a word. Oh, look, we found one, automobile. Is that a noun, verb, or an adjective? Can you use that in sentences? How, how would you use that in a sentence? Okay, that's great. Let's move on to the next one. We found another one, noun, verb, or adjective keep moving around and having that discussion around the words. So just a, a, a nice, um, interesting way of teaching about different types of words. So the way this is set up is not only are the text in white font to hide on the white background, but the text sit on the top layer of the software, whereas this object is on the middle layer. So that means that when I drag it around my page, it's moving behind all of the text is and hence revealing it. What you can also do is take this a step further and you can use a tool over here called your fill tool. And once again, it will appear as a little bucket on the primary interface as well. So if I click on that, we could decide that we're gonna look at all our words and we're gonna call color all of our nouns yellow or all of our nouns red. Let's go with, with my colors here our verbs, green, and maybe our adjectives, purple. So we could have the discussion, automobile, that's a noun, so let's color it red. Now, the reason why it colors the text and not the shape behind is because the text sits on the layer above the shape, okay? So we can then move it on to the next one. Let's find another one. Oh, we've got two together. So let's find an action, and we could make that one green. Okay, so we start to reveal them as, um, as we work our way through that page. So a very simple idea, but can be used in lots of different ways. This is another idea that I really like. And again, this was um, created uh, by the Planet team for some webinars that we ran um, years, a few years ago in, in the States. And I, I love this one. And this idea um, can be used in so many different ways. And I've, I've seen it used in just about every subject area. So what we've got is our word here, and in this case, it's for younger learners and we're missing a vowel. So I want them to identify what vowel is missing. Now, I like that they've also used that grouping feature um, to add an image in. So we are talking about pre-readers, so to help them out, giving that, them that visual cue as well. And if I pull that across, I can then see that actually we're missing the value E, the vowel E. Okay, so we reveal it over here. So how does that work? It looks like I've split my page into two colors, but what I've actually done, or what has been done in this case, is on the right side, there is a shape, a blue shape that's locked into place there. So it gives that illusion of having to split the, the flip chart page into two different colors. You can see that the actual background of the flip chart page is green. Okay, so let's put that back there. 
then when I drag this across, you don't see the green E here because it's the same color as the background. When I drag it across here, the background color changes and it reveals that E. Very, very simple, but very effective. Now this page is blank because I, I want to um, take you through something else that, that you can do with the software. Um, but I thought that I would show you another little, another little tip that the software has as well. So I want to put some text on this page. I want to put a passage. But instead of having to type it all out again, I know that I've got a Word document that has that passage on it. So what I can do is just minimize that so that I can see my flip chart page behind. And I can highlight the text and simply drag and drop it onto my flip chart page. OK, so it's put that text on there. Now what's great is once I bring the text in that way, I can um, change the size of the text box, but it's also editable text. So it means I can go in, select it all, and then change the font size to make it a much more reasonable size to be used on my display. So you can see here, okay? I can put that on there. Now, the feature I really wanted to show you with the software is the fill tool again. And with this, I can very quickly create um, a closed procedure or a fill in the blank activity. To do that, I'm just going to choose a white because my background is white and I can click on some of the words that I want to be taken out. Okay, so let's just take a few words out there. So you can see I can very quickly create a closed procedure. Okay, those words haven't gone anywhere. They're still there. What I can do to reveal them is I just choose another color and click back onto that space again and you'll see that those words are revealed to me. Now the other reason why I really like to use the fill tool as opposed to a highlighter tool for highlighting things, well you can see because I can make that, that uh, fill in the blank really quickly. But the other reason why I like that is that you can see the text here doesn't actually fit onto the page um, in that font. So I could put a restrictor on and be able to move that up and down. And when using the fill tool, moving that text, the color also goes with it. If I use the highlighter, I would lose that. As soon as I move the text, the highlight doesn't go with it. Okay, so another couple of great ideas there. This is my last example. Um, and this one, we've got a... Um, little story about a snowy morning. And now I know that we are getting into spring and we shouldn't be thinking about snow, but I thought this was quite apt because we actually had snow on the weekend here in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, so we're not quite ready to, to move on to spring yet. So I've, I've, I've um, gone with the, the current weather and we've done our little snowy passage here. So what I could do is have my class use that fill tool and they could color in um, different types of words, okay, and then they could come up and they could write down in the boxes down here whether it's a noun, verb, or an adjective. Well, I can make it a little bit more interesting than that because what the software allows me to do is I could right-click on an object and extract, so right-click on a word and extract that, so it makes an exact copy of that from the passage, and I could then have my class drag that down to where they think it goes. Okay, so I'll show you that again. It's over top of the word I want, and then right click and extract text, and I can drag that out and put that where it should go. Okay? But for, my, for younger learners, that's maybe not ideal to have right click and then this big menu come up and expecting them to find the one that says extract text. So what I can do is, again, I'm going to come over to my browser window here and pin that. I select the whole passage, and then I'm going to go to my action. And I'm going to current selection all actions, and it's alphabetical order. I just want to scroll down to find the extract text, so we can see it here. Click on that, and then just apply the changes. Now, if I come back over here, you see I get this little blue play button. And this means that if I left click on that word, it now makes an exact copy for me. Left click, I get that exact copy. Okay, so 
much nicer than having to right click and open up that menu. And again, that's just selecting it, going into the action browser, hovering over top of it will tell me it's the action browser, and then looking down in the action to find that extract text, making sure that you apply the changes so that it works. And you know that you've applied the changes when you get that little blue play button there, okay? One last thing to take that a little bit further. So that gives me single words, but sometimes I want to isolate key pieces of information or phrases or sentences, depending on what we're talking about. So the software allows me to do that as well. If I double click to open up the text edit box, so you can see I've got my text edit menu in here. Um, what I can then do is I could highlight some text, so I've selected some text, and then drag it out of the passage, okay? So I can not just get one word, in this case, I could have a string of words, a phrase, or a key concept to isolate that we're gonna discuss further. So again, if you were using this on, on your computer, it would be holding the left key down to highlight it. If I was using this on the board, it would be highlighting it by keeping my pen down as I drag it across the text. Let go of that left click, and then left click again to drag that text out of the passage, okay? So just to finish up with further support for interacting with text, there are actually three really good active tips on Promethean Planet that cover extracting text, so I would suggest going and having a look on there. There are also some really great um, user-created flip charts um, that, that cover various ways that you can use text. So if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about that, have a look on Promethean Planet as well. If you just do a search for Active Inspire, there's some really great flip charts that um, users of Active Inspire have put together to train other teachers in their schools on how to use Active Inspire. So some really, really great information there. So just to finish up, um, we do, as I said, we do have a second part scheduled for the 23rd of June. I apologize we're not doing one in May, but I'm on holiday. Um, so we will pick up with our last one of the school year on June the 23rd. Um, and after that, watch out because we'll be able to do some New Year's, some, some more um, titles in the new school year as well. The ones that are the most popular right now on the Doodle Poll are Containers, Actions, and the Math Tools, but that might change because we are going to leave that Doodle Poll open for people to vote on for the next month or so as well. And just to finish off, um, my email address, please do not hesitate to email me personally if you have any questions about this session. I'm very happy to answer any questions that I can. And also, we have a, a dedicated um, at Promethean UKI Twitter handle where we're um, sharing lots of ideas, hints, tips, and useful information about technologies in the classroom. We always love to have follows, so um, please give that a follow. And also, I have my own Twitter handle there. You can see at TLC for UKI. I hope that that was helpful, um, and anyway, it would be really great to see you on our next webinar. Thank you.